as choice, and they too selected red side. But in terms of just replicating what happened in game two, you can see in game three here, Damwon taking blue, same bands, same first pick. Yeah, exactly the same bands as uh, in our second game. Gonna happen once again as the Akali snapped away from Showmaker. Let's see where the artifact can be. The uh, the Beast Akali that we saw in a few of the games, but there's Gragas Yasuo. And Gragas has been either picked away or banned against Canyon, I think almost this entire tournament. And this is why. It's because they pick this and they destroy you. And what have we learned about Dom One Gaming? It's about mid-game fights transitioning mm -hmm. into a very swift victory. Yeah. What does Gragas Yasuo do? They fight pretty good in the old mid-game. Yeah, as soon as Yasuo can utilize that double crit chance passive, mm -hmm. no, it's really all just about the synergy from the multiple knockups that Gragas can have, making a nearly unavoidable gank. What'll be interesting to me though, um, is what they end up going with the bot lane for nuclear because it worked, it was very seamless to have Kiana and Renekton as two physical damage soul laners last game because they had the magic damage coming out from Talia who does more magic damage than Gragas in terms of a sustained potential and a Kai'Sa, but with the Kai'Sa being taken away, there's a chance that Loki could get a little bit of armor stacking in and have some success. Yeah, last game Canyon did top the damage on his Talia, but we've seen yeah. many Graguses do a hell of a lot of damage as well, especially uh, looking throughout the LCK, some of our Gragas performances, especially uh, from Cuz of King's Own Dragon X, were just insane. Yeah. But Canyon also one of these players, and alongside Showmaker, as far as this duo is concerned, of the Gragas Yasuo that almost looked unbeatable in a lot of the games that we saw it in, at least. Uh, it's, it's very, very frightening, because we know that Showmaker just wants to carry. I can't wait to watch it. I mean, his Akali's been so great. Even in the loss, he was doing, he was kind of the only one holding yep. it together yep. for a lot of the game. Well, the Gnar was locked in, and that's something we haven't spoken about just yet. Hani going to be piloting that one towards the top side does mean the Akali is definitely going into the mid, mid lane. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of flexibility with this low key squad, and now that they've locked in the jungler, the Skana is going to be what they decide to take towards the Gragas. This composition isn't looking it's as looking... quintessential low-key as you yeah. expect from this uh, this series. Not looking very fast. No. Oh. All right. Jace locked okay. in. Okay. And Talia. Is this going to be the adaptation okay. on the Avenger duo that we saw? Well, the Yasuo might. <laughs> My brain is just breaking. Okay, so uh, what's sorry. happening is yeah. we got yes. It's probably so the bottom lane. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah, and then I'm like, then they're gonna put Jace in a soul lane and Chili in the jungle. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's what I was trying. How did? Okay, good job. You got there faster than me. I mean, I've seen Congrats. it before, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I commentate the, the, this team's league, so it, it's theoretically yeah, yeah. I should have a little bit of an advantage. Because technically, the Jace can go in three places. The Renekton could go in two. Talia can go in two. But I also have a theory yeah, that, like, so almost any soul lane champion can also work bot lane. Yeah. So actually, we may not necessarily know. Let's wait yeah. 15 this seconds. This is it. You're right. We guarantee. But this nope. is guarantee what we, we're guaranteeing it right now. <laughs> guarantee. Wow, you went from not having any clue what's going on <laughs> to, no, this is definitely it. There is no chance anything's changing. But this is how it should work, right? Because yeah. uh, Chovy is our mid lane Jace player in the LCK. Nogari is our top lane Jace player. That is just how it works. Khan, sorry, you lost that title. Mm -hmm. Nogari is too damn good on this champion. So this is all about dominating the laning phase and having this bottom lane that can be so explosive in the mid game. You keep the best friends duo together and you get these things to work out for you. So. I'm excited to see what our Nuclear and Beryl can do because this is all about commitment on the bottom side. In order to get any control in this lane, you really need to be playing with fire. Yeah, because it's a lane that can go very wrong. And if we do see Celebrity's Kai'Sa pick up any early kills, you never really know what's going to happen. But in terms of game pacing or who's going to be better in mid-game team fights, uh, I love what Dom Juan has done here in saying, no, we're just going to pick all the best, best mid-game team fighting champions. Yeah and just not let you have any of them. You can play late game. Uh, I think it's a much sounder strategy for Damwon to get a high percentage victory. The thing I absolutely love is that almost every champion on this uh, Damwon squad has a two item power spike. So you know exactly when they're going to be fighting and you know exactly when we're getting into game number three. Welcome to the Rift guys. Damwon Gaming versus Loki Esports game three.
We were talking about how important this, uh, this particular game is because this brings you to match point. This alleviates so much more of those nerves moving into that game number four that can be so pivotal. And I love that Darwin have come out swinging in this draft with a lot of comfortable picks for a lot of their players. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And then it's also um, having a little more action even right away in this game, right? Taking the initiative to go and invade, get more deep wards, really try and shut down DNK. In game two, they were very close to shutting down DNK in the jungle. If you remember, Showmaker yep. stole Raptors' as mid lane Kiana, and then Canyon tried the early game to Leah invade. They might try something similar this game, but we're seeing a slight adaptation from Loki, who's also getting some deep vision of their own. Yep, we've got wards traded on red buffs on either side of the map. Loki now moving over to get that leash happening for the Skana, who decided to move elsewhere as Jat, the artist, is uh, doing some sketching, but hasn't quite decided what he Sorry. wants to be drawing. I was trying to get to our feature that you haven't seen yet. All right. Um, which is numbering the jungle camps. So you can see, I'm, I'm taking too long on this thing. Um, so like first camp here, mm -hmm. right? Oh, Where does Canyon a beautiful one. decide to go next? He's likely just gonna immediately gain top lane and then go something like second camp, third camp and try and race to this, unless he sees something happening. But this is exactly yep, no, uh, what Dan One wants to do. To flash. That's what happens if you land that auto, get that red buff slow. Hani, no option other than flash. So this actually happened, this exact early game gank path happened in the group stage um, yeah. against Robo, and it was like 40 CS to two. The difference there though, is that Robo had touched the wave and Nagari was able to freeze it on him. This is a flash, so it will be a large advantage, but it's not setting up a freeze in the top lane. So uh, won't be quite as disastrous, and we'll see if DNK ends up uh, just showing on the red buff since it looks like Canyon decided not to race down bot. Yeah, that is going to be a ward four low key though, and they move over towards there. So vertical jungle is, is going to ensue as Venus didn't want to take that turret shot, but thankfully Aftershock is a rune, so we'll keep him alive for the moment. So a red buff is going to be claimed here, but it was, an in, it was a Raptor clear as well <laughs> coming in from Canyon. So able to steal away a little bit more than what DNK will be able to, assuming he's not going to immediately uh, head towards that Raptor camp, and I oh, think man. the Raptor camp would kill him if he went there. Thankfully, the smite going to get him a whole bunch of his health back. Yeah, so Damwon actually didn't see any of this because their wards expired right before DNK ended up walking into the area. Uh, Canyon's going to have to make an educated guess here. Um, when he does end up showing on a ward, if he shows and has red, he'll know exactly what it is, when I think he's very close to showing down in that bot river, but uh, either way, not too much gained or lost from these early jungle choices. Yeah, not too much of a worry. They do watch the Scryer's Bloom fly along and Beryl. His spidey senses were tingling, or his scorpion senses, I guess, as uh, DNK did, has now been confirmed to have stolen the red buff and now moving over to the Raptors as well. Canyon, if at first you don't succeed, back towards the top side and utilize the lack of flash on Hani. Could this be the first? First blood for Dom won this series is the question. DNK looking to try and stop that from being an eventuality Ooh, as Beryl on the wrong side. Yeah. Has snuck in here, gets a decent stun as there's the flash Zenith Blade. Beryl does have the aftershock, but it's not enough. First blood once again to Celebrity. And I just jinxed it, but that is three first bloods in a row for Loki Esports. And coming on the Skarner as well, just so much commitment from Damwon to gank top lane and sit around top lane. They kind of let DNK wander everywhere he wanted to. Think, think about how that was actually a relatively risky play from Skarner when he invaded Red Buff, got down to 20% health at level two, went back to River, reinvaded the Raptor camp before yeah. looping for that gank. I can see why it was unexpected for Barrel, but it does get rewarded in the first blood. Comes on down, and I think this was just Brilliant timing from DNK yeah. on multiple plays in a row, which is so cool, like you were saying. So the body slam being blocked by the Skana just spelt the end of Beryl. And winning in the 2v2, it's a pretty common thing as DNK now finds Canyon and the entire threaded volley is soaked by the Skana, but he has to use the flash to get himself out of the way as Artifact now down to 300 underneath his own turret and Showmaker asserting dominance. Oh, Remember, there is no Twilight Shroud Showmaker has the flash. He could 
Oh man, it's real scary here for Artifact. He has his Flash available as well, so in theory should be all right. And Grasp of the Undying is Artifact's decision on the runes. Often Fleet Footwork is something that you could go for if you're feeling a little bit of pressure, but wanting to have that max health as well. And yeah, Nogri's Jace is pretty good, guys. Yeah, he has... The, the thing to point out there is the forward percentage. He's just constantly near the other team's turret, pressuring, trying to get a larger and larger advantage. And that's why you see that the most impressive thing here is the damage per minute difference. That's how much more DPM he does than his opponent. A lot of champions or roles average like 400 damage per minute, let alone have that over the other top laner. And I also want to point out, 6 minutes and 10 seconds is the first time Canyon has went on the bottom half of the map. Oh he spent the God. first six minutes on the top side of the map. That's how much he was playing around the top side. He even has Agatha to take as well. Uh, if you have a look at Gromp on the blue side, DNK hanging around this Cloud Drake. Of course, Cloud Drake feeling a lot better here for low key because they have Ascana. Extra movement speed, always good. Leona as well does like that. DNK only level five, but still patrolling, trying to keep Artifact safe. And Artifact is the carry of this team most of the time, right? He is yeah. the guy that does most of the damage, and he's now on the Akali, a champion that he is known for. This Canyon's going to move on in immediately, but DNK, he's ready. Still, remember, not level 6 just yet, but Venus get him. snaps him right out of the air. The Eclipse is in, and now they're going to turn their attention over to Celebrity. Celebrity will be falling down, but now Venus behind enemy lines looking for his way out. Is this Owen Wilson, or is this Leona as Beryl's chasing? after him he's going for the execution Ooh. and I think he should be able to do it just waiting for as long as he possibly can oh. it is going to be the execution waste as, wastes as much time as possible before pulling the trigger as well yeah quite well done letting that timer wear out the greedier move would have been to continue to run into the jungle and try and get a recall off but yeah. that, that rarely works and it's early enough in the death timers that he'll be able to run back to lane basically the same time so I wonder if that Owen Wilson uh, call actually got picked up. Because I, I yeah, sometimes which I, Owen Wilson? I thought you're gonna like. I think Snake, Owen Wilson, like the, Salt the Snake, would have been the actor who, who acted in Behind Enemy Lines, the movie. I do remember watching trailers for that movie. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't watch the movie. It was <laughs> I didn't watch the movie. <laughs> Making a reference to a just a known <laughs> bad movie is uh, that's a roughie. There's a lot of movies made that you just completely forget about the existence of until you see them on like your Netflix scroll wheel. Yeah. Like, like wow, there's such good actors in this. How did I never hear about it? And it's then like, because and it was you awful. remember. And the worst one yeah. is is when you like you open it up thinking that you've never seen it before, and the intro is like that terrible intro <laughs> that you remember not wanting to watch. As we have a look at this replay once again. Yeah, I mean, really, Venus landing that Zenith Blade is what ends up securing them the kill, but. Uh, because Showmaker had channeled the teleport, which had already been burned by the Akali, it kind of gives them at least a one-for-one. One. And then, let's see if Barrel was in experience range. So even though he doesn't get gold, he yeah. does get the experience for it. So that's decent in keeping him alive in this game because they can't necessarily, they don't want to necessarily fight until they can at least match sixes down bottom. The thing that I really like as well is that Barrel was the one that went after him. So you're not actually wasting any time farming because the entire bottom lane was dead. So the Yasuo nuclear was able to get around that bottom lane, clean up all those minions, get the minion waves into exactly where they needed to, and Showmaker didn't waste any time. He moved straight towards the mid lane again. So just good clean play as far as making sure that no resources went to waste. But it is still low key with an advantage as far as kills. It's not in, in terms of gold. We've gotten used to seeing this so far. You just need to be that little bit more ahead than you otherwise think you need to be. Yeah, and as we approach the 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes are not exactly uh, Dom Juan's specialty, even in the group stage, but it is really between the 20 and 25 minute mark, you can see where they've been exploding their gold leads. And part of that is just them being good, um, but a lot of it is they just hit the specific items that they want to, and then they go very aggressive. But in terms of the early game, it hasn't been that great for them. Yeah, but... Going, like, doubling your lead uh, between those last 10 minutes as well yeah. just shows that this team plays around around the time Baron spawns. That's when they go for their fights, and then they can move towards the Baron, and then they win the game, right? That's how they sort of expand their leads. And once again, this is a composition that has all of those things, right? Nogari going towards the lethality version of the Jace. We've seen a few different varieties. Is this the first time we've seen Jace? Stats would have told me. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, think that's, it is. That's I don't think so. Not yeah. so far in this tournament. Just having a little bit of a brain fade. First time we've seen Nogri's Jace, though. It's not the first time I've seen Nogri destroy a turret at, at around 10 minutes. 10.35. Five plates to Jace, 30 CS advantage, and now the Rift to bring mid. So before 14 minutes, Domwon can have both of the solo lanes opened up, which will then kind of allow them to go around and hunt with this Gragas Yasuo uh, pretty much wherever they want to go. So even though the first 10 minutes weren't that great, it does seem like they're kind of getting what they want out of this game. Really interesting thing about the uh, Yasuo synergy for this comp as well is that you've got Seismic Shove, AoE knockup, and you've also got the Hammerback for the uh, Jace as well. So you've got three members that are, sorry, four members that are capable of uh, setting up the Yasuo if you include Yasuo himself. Yeah, and you were right about the Jace pick. It had been banned before so far in the uh -huh, playing stage. Okay, so cool. I believe Amut was the there. player that got the Jace banned against him. Yep. We're going to get to see him play. Up next, maybe the Jace Clutch. even. Yeah. Stay tuned after this series for Clutch versus Royal Youth. There's his low key coming down for a gank. One, sorry, three versus two. As Nuclear already down extraordinarily low. The last breath not going to be utilized because Nuclear knew he was dead. The teleport out, now though. coming in. Not sure what <laughs> Nogari wanted to do. He wanted to use both of his summoner spells and he got his wish as Rift Herald is going to be thrown down in the mid lane. It was all the distraction play, exactly what use Nuclear has been used to. I think. He was hoping Nuclear would alt off the Gragas ulti and then Nuggery would come in to turn that play around. But that didn't happen, so he had to flash immediately. Rift Herald distracts, and now we could see a bit of a skirmish around the Cloud Drake. Yeah, of course, uh, this is the latest a Drake's taken to go down as well this series because we've seen so many Infernals and uh, pretty nice dragons. Not going to be happening this time. The Cloud is going to be the debut dragon as uh, Beryl finds himself a control ward and is going to look to clear that one out. So much vision control around this area for Darmon, but they still don't want the dragon. Powered Shock Blast, DNK might overextend here, but they're not going to go for it. Beryl and Canyon over to the side. Showmaker in here as well. Vision available. Celebrity finds a Void Seeker, but otherwise not too much to be found. Blue buff. Is what really they're fighting crushing over. the issue. Let's There's see if Loki fights back. DNK. He was looking for the ult, but didn't even get there. Harney's on the top side. He ain't doing anything. He's got no teleporters. Nuclear is looking to turn up. Can we find the knockups? The Showmaker is gigantic. Canyon jumps over with the wall, and there's the flash forward. Barrel gets the body slam, and Nuclear just smacks him back down with the last breath. You could see how much Domwon was just trying to force Loki into action right there, and eventually they do. Showmaker kind of randomly ends up picking up the blue buff because of his ultimate Dominus ticks. Oh, really? Yeah, and now they just continue to push forward. That was, uh, I think that was planned, I would assume, yeah. as uh, the last plate. One of the last plates gonna be taken down here as the burst damage is easily enough. Barrel gets a well-deserved kill. Scragus doing a lot of the work there. As our Artifact 1v1 Nogri on the bottom side of the map, guys. That happened. We're gonna In have to... Woo. In the meantime, that's what that's the thing that happened. Yeah, that and looks like he did it without his ultimate too. So uh, that will require a second look. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know there was a lot going on, but I'd really like to to have a look at how that how that happened. <laughs> Kali does damage. Maybe she does. She does. I actually just want to see how it all went down. Remember, he used both of his summoner spells. He's on. So he's already has relatively low. Mana. Cutlass probably just lands an E. And then he's dead. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't even need that. I don't even think he lost a health. Very easy. One health. And oh, HP. For Kali in the side lanes. Yeah. Doesn't stop him from having the most gold in the game. I think he also went back and got a full dust blade of, dust blade of Drakthar. So yep. maybe greeting for a turret plate and understanding that he was probably going to be taking, taken down. So now with all that lethality that we were talking about, this is, of course... The two-item build that you want for a mid-game Jace power spike does go along with what Darmwon have available to them. So we are at the time where they do want to be pushing uh, the envelope, getting things forward, mm. locking down these turrets, getting the team fights that they want. But it's Loki that's able to do so as Doggery, yeah, should be dead underneath this turret. The Impale is in, all too easy, but now Showmaker turns up. Nard back underneath this turret, but now the rest of Darmon gets in here. The last breath, Venus looking to go down second as the Nar was already dead. Artifact as well, unable to lock down Canyon is now D and K. He's the one in the enemy jungle, and Beryl is looking for him. Doesn't have the ultimate. In fact, no one has ultimates, but they don't need them as Nuclear picks up that one very comfortably with just a spin of the Q. 
Yeah, even though I like the idea of Loki to punish Nogari over and over again, since that is really his weakness as a player. So many isolated deaths, always trying to maximize yep. his gold. They're committing very hard for it, and in this game, Dalmon Gaming is really chasing after those commits to clean up. So even though no early game resources were really used onto nuclear, he's now sitting at a three kill Yasuo. You watch this fight once again, they dive through the turret, they use Skarner ulti, they lose Yona ulti, and then just to disengage, they're using Nar ulti, which makes the re-engage by Dalmon pretty free. Yeah. Gragas into Yasuo, easy does it, and then since DNK had already dove behind the turret, it's easy to chase him down. Nice shot by Canyon here with the Talia. Oh yeah, over the wall. It didn't actually miss that as it was all going on. And his flash to get out of the way of the Akali as well. I believe Artifact didn't have a charge left of the ultimate to get into the fight. So just disjointed from Loki, but an immediate answer from Damwon Gaming. You'd think three versus one is probably enough to take someone down in a side lane, but it is. Not only were they uh, unable to win the ensuing fight, but they gave Nogari the 0-2 power spike. <laughs> that is his specialty. That is his specialty, Jet. I'm glad that you've learned. 0-2 and also 700 more gold than the rest of his team. Because <laughs> uh, of turret plates. Just, just no yeah. great things, and guys. We, we mentioned that Dom Juan has two item power spikes. A lot of these champs are just one. Uh, That's like true. Like Ghostblade yeah. on Jay, Sojin on Renekton, your Shiv on Yasuo. That's really what you need to just turn on and become powerful. Same with Runic Echoes on Canyon. So I think that's why we've seen them try and be so active. And I do like what Loki's doing here. They're just trying to chase for kills to break the inevitability of all this side lane pressure that Dom One's comp can put out. But if any of those initiations go at all wrong, like we saw the three man yeah. get countered and then this other three man just now completely miss on Showmaker, they lose so much around the rest of the map. And someone wishes that they could be trying to get topside vision and playing around a Baron pit, but unfortunately, we're still two, two and a half minutes away from the Baron even being a thing on the map. Shelly was taken very, very quickly in this game, and it's a 6,000 gold lead. It feels like Damwon have been warming up so far this series. And Loki just want game one back. They want their lane swap back. And I want to go back to the draft, Jat, because I feel right. like this was a misfire on the draft for Loki, because I think what made them special in game one was that they were mixing it up. They were yep. creating strange things. And this, like, this draft is uninteresting in a lot of ways when it comes to changing the meta and adapting to what makes Loki, Loki. Yeah, I, I completely agree on that one. It's also kind of, you got to check, like, what are our expectations, really, as Venus gets... I think he might Let's be dead, guys. As, uh, well, Hani is in position, has Meganar available. They might try and fight. Yeah, we look for it as uh, Beryl does have his uh, stop uh, stopwatch available anyway as double kill comes in for the Renekton. Artifact off to the backside, but he is just dealt with, stabbed with a Q. And I was looking for QSS in my brain. I couldn't find it, and Loki couldn't find the team fight. Because every time we have these David and Goliath type matchups. Oh yes. Yeah. Do uh, know. We always ask the David in the story to try a bunch of new Slip weird shots. strategies. Like, but there's only so much you can innovate and bring to a series, right? Like lane swapping yeah. was their one. They're, they're kind of just assuming that Dom Juan has an answer to it, or they only like doing that with Tristan Orn. Right? And it's been taken away completely from them in the draft phase. And then secondarily, you're saying, all right, maybe solo lane pike. Well, it didn't work, right? How many of these things can you keep pulling out of your pockets? Or um, does Damwon just kind of take the early game team against you and crush, which is what we're seeing here. Loki's trying to fight back. Um, but It almost worked, actually. The Nara into the back line from Hani was actually great. But unfortunately, the crocodile was just way too big. Yeah. Showmaker's Renekton is pretty scary. Yeah, can't find him at the moment. As we have a look at the damage to champions, Nagari done the most inting for Dom on this game, has done the most damage, and has earned the, mo the most gold. Uh, he just, he's a man that likes all the attention, and so far he's deserving it. His Jace is living up to expectation. Baron yeah. finally spawns as DNK goes down to below half, taking a threaded volley from Canyon. Yeah, it's the... I don't, I don't want to say he has a good 0-2-6 Jace game because <laughs> normally you're, you say, no, if it gets late game, it's bad. You don't want to give gold. But 
He's having a pretty good 0-2-6 chase game. He's got the most gold in the game. You gotta get used to it. But you like, gotta get used to the 0-2 power spike, Jack. Canyon Embrace spent it. the first six minutes ganking for him. Yeah. <laughs> and then, still abandoned the bot side. I want to say Nuclear and Barrel have done work this game. Because... Look. Well, they're gonna find them yep, yet again. there it is again. All too easy. The best friends club on the bottom side of the map. DNK not gonna get locked down. But at least they do bully them out of their own jungle and the Baron could be the opportunity here for Damwon. Yeah, and because they have so many melees, they actually do fight as their way of breaking this open, and uh, really just, I think they're just gonna keep running these plays for picks over and over again. Having the Mountain Drake does make it more possible for them to take Drake, but uh, don't see them in any rush. To just get back to Nuclear and Barrel, this is, this is what you really love as a jungler if your bot lane can do this. You spend the whole game topside. Yep. <laughs> and then, they, they don't complain. No. They join in for your team fights, and then they end up just getting their gold anyway after the kills. And, you and they engage your fights for you and provide perfect setups for your seismic shove so you yeah. look really good. These are the free low games. Mm -hmm. When you're able to just hard camp your Jace, the other jungler just lives bot side and doesn't get anything done. Yep, that's the on your bottom lane, guys. Even though the jungler is the one that looks like he's really cool in the early stages, don't worry, it's all about the... Bottom lane, not losing. Yeah. Really, if you think about the strategy, Canyon and Nogari, like, the strategy itself didn't work. No, <laughs> like, no, it's let, didn't. Yes, they did kill the turret early, which is part of the strategy working, but they, they, you know, were unable to generate any kills for themselves. Really, the mid and bot lane, which just played 3v4 for most of the game, mm -hmm. they're carrying. And now there's an Infinity Edge on Nuclear, so that's the two-item spike that uh, everyone knows about. There it is. On the old Yasuo, 100% crit, absolutely there. And uh, there's the two items that Showmaker wanted. He's a very big boy, Spear of Sojin, as well as his Black Cleaver. A heck of a lot of cooldown reduction, if you don't mind. An infinite cooldown reduction when he presses R. This is a, a scary amount of damage. I think Canyon needs to go back home and maybe buy his next item, but his stopwatch is still unused, so he basically has his onions. Now Darmon looking to try and dive in, in a turret. Nogu clearing out some wards Ooh. there. There's the flick back, half the health bar missing on the Skana. Spooky. This is just a siege. It's aggressive because remember, this composition doesn't siege very well at all. Yep. They do have the damage. And if they're intimidating enough, they can get that low range to work. As there's the barrel, the boot back, the ultimate combo. And Canyon picks up the kill with a threaded volley. It's what happens. I mean, David versus Goliath. Now it's the Goliath that's throwing the rocks. It's they, so unfair. The tables have turned, Jad. It's like game one happened, but then ah, look how many rocks he has. stole his weapon. He's got a ton of rocks. Yeah, uh, in a row. And this Baron yeah. may just be dead. 23 minutes Likely. into the game. I get a fight. Oh, that's Wait good. That's a good yeah, reveal. Under 2,000, we could have another steal as Noggery, not even in the pit, but Canyon is going to be able to get that one locked down. Oh, the boot back. There it the is. The four man Nara into the wall. Could this be Loki's team fight already? Two have gone down as Noggery. Gonna have to do it by himself as Canyon now over to the side, having to fight Artifact. And look at the aggro management. It's stunning from Loki, and they get the ace. Oh man, Dom one just group up for the Nar ultimate. I'll have to go back and see why was Nagari not there. Like he he is playing so sloppily in this whole series. Uh, they picked DNK as the jungler. Maybe Nagari wanted to go back for some mana. Yeah, and then he just teleports in way far away from the rest of the team. I I really put this almost entirely on Jace, because if this was a 5v5 and the team didn't have to all hide in the back of the pit for the Gnar and they could actually pull back out for a real fight, I don't think this happens. Celebrity doing a very good job alting away from Nagri at the end of this fight Yeah, to pick up the kill and keep it really just completely invalidated in the Baron. The Baron power play is over. Yeah, there is no Baron. Baron's yeah. gone. It's dead. It's over. 5,000 gold is the lead for Damwon. But uh, you wouldn't expect it. After a fight like that, you saw Celebrity's damage just huge. The way he kited Nogari at the end there is the reason why they were able to win because they were really low health bars, right? He kills, yeah. he insta kills the Kaiser in one of the iterations of that fight. It's a theory that that could have been a quadra kill for the Jace. It wasn't the case though. He was able to trade one for one at the very end in that isolated moment. And that means that Celebrity dies, but all of Damwon is the trade. And which, it does... by the way, is not worth it. Yeah, because it leaves the window open now for Celebrity to carry. Yeah. Right? We have 
Yes, we do have a bot lane Yasuo, but we don't have the same type of sustained damage threat that you get from the three item Kaisa. Still 6,000 gold leads, still, you know, Damwon macro versus Loki macro, and Loki says they just go for kills for their general strategy, but getting rid of the Baron and winning that fight gives them a bit of a chance. Well, Nogari has to flash to get out of the way of the Solar Flare. Couldn't proc his Edge of Night fast enough. Presses all of those buttons as quickly as he can, but Damwon looking like they're scattered a little bit. Not their true, well-oiled, coordinated selves. As the Baron no longer a thing to fight for. The uh, Mountain Drake was taken by Loki as well. Still have to wait three and a half minutes for that objective to be on the board. And Zarmon are looking for poke damage with the Jace, but he's the only member of the squad, apart from, I guess, a, a Gragas that can really help with that. Mm. And even then, it's not necessarily working because there is a fair bit of uh, ability to soak here. Venus stands in front, presses W. Things feel all right. Yeah, and if uh, if Skarner and Nar both build up towards potentially Randwins, they or even just armor health items like a Dead Man's Plate or something, they'll be much more resilient uh, to Damwon. Because like we talked about, hey, what's their bot lane going to be? They do need to worry a little bit about damage spread later in the game. They, they do do that. Technically, their three main carry roles are all physical damage. And if Canyon misses his skill shots in a fight, it's a front line that's going to be relatively difficult for Damwon to take down. Well, you can see that goal graph. <laughs> Certainly falling back. See that little uh, little spike there? I believe that was just as the Baron went down. And then immediately, uh, we had a bit of a change. 9.5k gold would be a massive throw. Yeah. 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 We're not there yet, though. They still have control of pretty much the whole map. Yeah, I wouldn't go ap applying for baseball teams or anything like that yet. Dumb one. Not necessary. As uh, the all the vision around this Baron pit is certainly belong to them. We've got identical spawn timers down to the second on the dragon and the baron which is cool <laughs> i'm trying to like move look at them back both at the same time see right? if they actually are completely identical i think they, they seem ridiculously identical. close if you because these timers are automatic it's not like someone pressed start on both of them i'm pretty sure they're automatic in the spectator class does the though. circles help help you pay attention yeah it's my first use of Is service. the one on the right a little behind? I think behind? the Baron's a little bit earlier. Okay. I think if you were going to objectively go to the one that spawns first, it's the Baron. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Get rid of those circles now. I'm a little bit excited. That was my first circle. Yeah, it's almost like the game where there's a square bouncing around on the screen. You're trying to wave for it to the corner. I've never <laughs> seen timers yeah. this sync in my I life. I know. This is amazing. And the kills are the same. Oh my Both teams have a mountain. And the Drake. scores are the same. And the turrets are completely different. The drakes are completely different. It's a disaster. Yeah, 1-1, one, 11-11. One, yeah. Oh wow, for a second. <laughs> oh yeah. Was one. We had like one 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 one. It's <laughs> just binary, everything. It's, I don't know, man. Maybe there's some there's some trickery at work. There's Speaking of trickery at work, Jad, I want to bring it back to the game just a little bit and look at the warding here. Because you can see that line of control ward that yeah. someone have set up. This is the suffocation that uh, Damwon are capable of in the mid to late game, where they just make sure that there's just a whole bunch of your uh, jungle camps that you're not allowed to take. Yeah, and I wonder, like, Loki would have to take a big risk here if they wanted to just rush Baron, because if I, I'd expect Damwon to just have Baron vision and then have someone go kind of lazily take Mountain Drake. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd have to guess, right? Uh, as that happens, Loki is kind of guessing, but there's a high chance to get caught out here. Oh, DNK, once again down to half. It's another barrel oh, to come no. back. The last breath, and into the death chamber goes the Scorpion. Yep. Yeah, but no one was moved to the Mountain Drake. Damwon kept five people completely around the so Baron that's pit. that's true. So Loki and Loki could couldn't check. They could trade the Mountain Drake for the Baron here as well, so all is yeah. not entirely lost. I think they want to fight, though. Yep, Weaver's Wall's going to get rid of a few, but Venus will have the ability to throw over the lantern if he wants to, but they've already lost the Baron. No chance. There's no smite available, and now five versus four is not a fight that Loki wanted to take. Good and power shot blast there from Noggery. As uh, I believe at least one person will head down, grab that Mountain Drake, and now continue the push here for Dom One. It feels like they've had one hiccup, but they've yep. pulled things back. Yep. Critically, mm -hmm. Noggery didn't teleport back to base to finish his item while his team was doing Baron. 
And then that resulted in Dunwon not all dying yep. after taking the Baron. This that power helps. play might be better than the first <laughs> I one. I think it will be. Uh, DNK really far ahead of his team there. I think Loki would have wanted to be more grouped right there and definitely needed Nar with them if they're going to be doing a face check like that. And it is easily punished by Damwon. Yep. So pretty elementary play there. They grabbed themselves that second Mountain Drake very easily. And now it's nuclear building towards his more of Mount Mortius. It's a five item. Yasuo incoming. It's getting very scary. GA is done for Showmaker. He is gigantic. And now Black Cleaver for Nogri with Mercurial Scimitar completion away from this Jace being six items. And I could keep listing off the item spikes, but I think you guys understand that this is a dumb one that is well and truly ready to fight and ready to win this game, and they now have a Baron buff in order to do, to, do so. Loki need a desperation team fight, and they yep. need it to be heroic. Yep, and I think they should probably go for it pretty soon, especially since they were unable to keep the minion wave dead and will be losing this inhibitor soon. Uh, or they can wait for another 4-1 opportunity. So eventually, Showmaker or Nogri will be off in the side trying to do damage to a turret. Yeah. Right when he shows there, yeah. you want to try. It's just everything's really hard because they also don't have any flank wars to teleport in behind. Well, having like only two champions that are pseudo ranged is a problem, which is why these uh, inhibitors are difficult to take down even with a Baron. Yep. But it will eventually go. I say difficult to take down, but with a 9,000 gold lead, this should be a steamroll, right? But it wasn't the case. Yeah, they have three cannons that ended up. Yeah. Grouping up for that one. That's how long they held that minion wave there. Nogari's still using it, like boosting up these uh, cannon minions with the Baron buff. Finally, Celebrity gets there, but goes down to half health by just an empowered shock blast. Oh, so pretty how the third wave just arrives yep. as the second one crashes. It's like a cooking show, isn't it? This is the one I prepared earlier. Talking about minion waves this time. Down one, take down this inhibitor. Inhibitor turret first, we're playing it by the book, but in goes Celebrity, he's gonna start this fight against Nogari, but look at the burst damage, the flash over, the hammer shot was actually what was locking down Celebrity, brilliant stuff there from Nogari, and Showmaker dives onto Celebrity there. And you can see Damwon, no one going down just yet. Finally, it's Nuclear that falls, but the health bars of Loki were all invested for one pesky Yasuo. It's turned though in the end, so two for two, thus far as the bottom lane from Dom one did fall. Did Nogri wants to end. Yeah. And, he uh, says stop the recalls. He's just going to be jumping on top of these Nexus turrets. The Nexus is going to be the next one. And yeah, we've stopped the backs. And Dom one moved to match point in this series. 14 kills to 14. So got picked off a little bit more than they would want to, but kept the map pressure, the gold, and the turrets in their favor pretty much the entire time. And now the big question will be, for Loki, what do they possibly have left? Because every game for them has looked more and more standard. Yeah. Damwon has done more and more to counter them. It and feels it's, like it's more and more one-sided as yeah. well, the further we go in this series. It's like Damwon have warmed up to the best of fives on the big stage and are now ready to, to really bring it home. That being said, crazier things have happened, Jat. Like a game one victory for Loki. <laughs> exactly. Crazy things happened not a, like not an hour ago, you know? So yeah. Loki, they're not out of it yet, and they do just need to keep their heads in it, keep that mental together, which can be very hard to hold on to. But remember, they have nothing to lose, right? This, they are by, an, yeah. by, a mar by a huge margin, the underdogs in this matchup. And in comparison to all of the other best of fives that we have, this is the most askew. So by taking one game, yeah. that's fantastic. And the State Farm Analyst Desk is standing by to break that one down. Thank you very much, Jatless. Uh, look, two to one now in favor of Dam One Gaming. All credit to Dam One. Uh, once the games have kind of become a little bit more traditional, a little bit more fundamental, as we were saying from the previous one, Dam One are clearly uh, pulling ahead. Let's pull out the draft and talk a little bit about how exactly Dam One went on to win. It was mostly a clinical game, with the exception of the Baron. Yeah, and I think the draft is a great place to start in these conversations because it's really important on blue side to be able to have flip flex picks to ensure a strong draft. And Dam One is the only team that I've seen in this world that looks very convincing on the Renekton flex pick. So they're able to move that into multiple areas. Uh, the reason I didn't like this draft from Loki's perspective was that they went for the Nar counter pick 
into Renekton. How have we know it's a flex? We know they're probably not going to play Nar mid, and they already had a counter in the Yasuo yeah. locked in. Like, they could just send Yasuo top. Yasuo Gragas is going to absolutely destroy that lane. They go with the Jace instead, which is an even harder counter pick, and everything kind of falls over from there. Yeah, you know, it seemed like they wanted to get something that Hani could play safe on, but I totally agree with you that that was always going to be a losing lane for him. At the same time, I did like that they were able to prioritize the Akali uh, for Artifact in the mid lane. He's looked very good on that champion, even in this game, was able to come away with some important plays. But at the end of the day, this 4-5 pick uh, from Damwon is just thing that like sealed the deal for me. They come in with the Talia, very strong early game jungler, was able to walk in for that level 1 red buff steal into a top lane gank to burn the flash on Nar. And at that point, it was like, yeah. this lane was already miserable, now it becomes unplayable. Yeah, and I just, like, I don't understand <laughs> the tactic. So game 1, we say, we know that Damwon is going to 1-3-1. One, one. It's how yes. they generate all of their gold lead between 20 to 25 minutes. So they go with an Orn, a Shen, a Twisted Fate, and it's like, they, are, they understand exactly yes. how to play against this team. This game, they're looking a worse 1-3-1. One, they, just... they have a losing top lane, a losing jungle matchup, a losing mid lane, a bottom lane that should lose in all-in fight too. Yes, you have a ranged matchup, but like, I think Look they just got way. outdrafted. Look at it this way. Now we know, undeniably, that Loki cannot be beat Damwon in a straight-up fair fight, right? So maybe it's a science experiment. This is a little bit of a joke, of course. Let's turn our attention to the next few minutes, okay? Because Damwon, they get early advantages. You've already touched on the fact that their comp worked out. Uh, this was a little bit of setup about how you want to talk about Damwon and understanding pressure. Right, so uh, this is a situation where Loki are trying to force fight, which we wanted to see, but look at the map right now. Mid lane fully pushed in from Dam1. Uh, uh, Kaisa can't enter the fight, doesn't have TP. Akali 2 is bottom lane, so she needs to TP into the fight. And as we uh, press play and go forward with this clip, you'll see Loki are trying to attempt the dive on towards Naguri, and they have all the tools to start it off, but instantly the teleports come on through, and then that three-man stack of Damwon is able to come around. And because of the tower and the terrain around this area, Loki are now in a situation that that they can't escape from. Celebrity can never enter this fight, and Artifact is also late to the teleport. These are the problems that I see with Loki's game plan, and it's why I think on an even footing, that's why I'm almost always gonna give the edge to Damwon. And just don't trade the resources. Use your three members, get the teleport out, pick up the kill. If you can get out, that's great. Otherwise, push mid lane, push bottom lane, generate some pressure, pick up some solo gold. This is like, these are just basic parts of League of Legends that are just completely lacking in the Loki gameplay. And what we ended up seeing, as you can see with the stats down there, this is the first game in this series where Damwon has won or really smashed inside of the early game. I think they got both the Drake and the Herald as well as 12 mm -hmm. turret plates before they fell in this matchup. So Damwon had the lead, they had the compositional advantage, and it led to one of the more, the easier closeouts for them. However, you say easy closeout, there were <laughs> some times in this Ooh. game where I was a little bit worried for down one because they they went into a hard map split and they sh should have been able to take top lane turret which they did however they weren't once again able to execute on any of the dives and bottom lane they should have been i think more opportunities for the akali to be able to roam down and create a four-man uh pressure situation when you're playing that far towards top lane it does isolate the rest of the map i also think that they're uh, the Baron fight that they like gave to them was like a very good opportun uh, like opportunistic play from Loki yeah. that we've been talking about and kind of shows the disrespect that can creep into people's games as they go for like a teleport playback in. I have a question for you, Spawn, because you are quite critical now on, on some of the, the elements of Dam One's game where you want them to finish cleaner. You want this like number three LCK seed to be playing to a higher level, right? Yep. Let's play this Baron fight and talk me through your perspective on the fact that Nuguri teleports not only late, but if you look at the minimap, he teleports way far away. Uh, and then obviously the risk that is uh, allowing Loki back into the game. Yeah, so the thing is, is that Nuguri's teleport far away is just a miscommunication, I think, from the team. However, the crowding into the back of Baron Pit, and I was actually going to say, on the approach as well, the fact that you don't have perfect vision on Loki's approach to the Baron is the issue. That's how this all starts, because when you have had control of this area for so long, you should know exactly where every single member is coming from. If the fight does get pushed back into that pixel brush, into the bendy brush, you need wards already in there to be able to fight them. Otherwise, they have the fog of war advantage. There are just little things missing from that Baron setup that I would like to see reintroduced by Damwon. And for me, I'm looking at that, and you have to make a call. Once Nugri's teleport goes way, way far away, it's oh, a 4v4. Yeah. You either have to commit to the Baron and risk losing a fight in the pit, which is what happened, or look for the turn. And that's what was missing for me. Granted, their turn tools, I don't think were fantastic in a game like this after they 
I guess some of the Yasuo isn't fantastic. Uh, I'd, I'd have to look and see if they had the cooldowns. Ooh, I'm pretty sure they used that to get the pick no, on I'm DNK. not talking about the ultimate. I'm just saying stack up two tornadoes on sure. Baron, put your Yasuo next to the wall, and just body slam over with the vision that you well, planted beforehand. We're a minute away from going to ad break. I want to look forward. Loki have chosen blue side for what could be their last game of the 2019 World Championship. The question I ask you is, what do they pivot coming into this game if fundamentals are not working? I don't like the blue side pick, I don't think. <laughs> so, so change the side so, selection? So the reason, uh, so I'm going to theorize here. The reason you pick blue side is because you're going for the level one invade on top side of the map. So I assume they're going to go with Talia or something incredibly strong, level one, maybe a Twisted Fate. And they're going to look to split the map hard through red side. That's what I think they're going to do. Um, so I'd like to see them like actually execute. Closing thoughts that. from Ender. So I think by going to blue side, you can try to free up the Tristana pick, which could uh, fuel into a lane swap. Because I don't think on even Footing, low key can ever pick up a game off damn one. I think they must go back to a lane swap and get those picks. They must or they will. Or do you Both. Think Okay, there we go. Must and will go back to the lane swap. Damn one have bounced back and are just one win away from securing the group stage at Worlds. Can Loki force a game five? We'll find out after this.